Hello and welcome to the weekend edition. I'm Dr. Kingori. We have a great show lined up for you. Our guest tonight is one of Kenya's favorite lawmakers, the member of parliament for Suba North constituency, Honorable Milio Diambo, is in the house. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we get to that part of the show, now, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Nurdin Haji, has revealed that one of the challenges they face in the prosecution of corruption cases is that those, the people, uh, the people who steal public funds, waste the money instead of investing it. As in, waste our to me, Pesa Vizuri. <laughs> As in, the, uh, our to me, Pesa Vizuri, such that when they get arrested, there is nothing to recover. The DPP has clarified, of course, that this is not to mean that he supports theft. I also agree that he has a solid point. But how do we achieve responsible spending of stolen money? Imagine, imagine a press conference from the DCI. Uh, we have arrested uh, seven suspects from the NYS cardo. Uh, five have been released because they are no longer suspects. They are now investors. <laughs> Yes. Wamekubali kuiba wameiba lakini ile pesa waliiba walitumia kujenga daraja. Uh, this particular one cost 22 million and we have, we have since recovered it and it will be used uh, in the building bridges initiative. Now, the, the DPP has a point. But a question the question is what happens to the thief caught but has invested properly? And and by the way who says thieves don't, uh, don't use wrong money for the right reasons? When John Kibera, the former grave robber, was on the show, he confessed that during his days in crime, they used to give back from where they stole. Kenya. <laughs> Panda Mahali Utavuna. Kwa hivyo, na wapea kumi. Unatua 10%. 10%. As a grave robber, he's one of the typical examples of started from the bottom, now we're here. Now, <laughs> yes. For real, for real. Now, in other news, uh, our deputy president, William Ruto, was trolled this week online for launching an ICT center with old computers. First of all, the computers may be old, but you do realize with the, president, with the presence of uh, the DP, the operating system for the computers will be Windows 2022. <laughs> yes. And people, people were complaining that the project is noble, but could have been, it could have been launched by an MCA or the area subchief. What people don't realize is that the DP had to be there in person because old computers require so much power. Alafu, what you are to a DP? This is not the first time Serikali men launch Mashidi Mze. Also, uh, according, to a study, according to a study by uh, the American Mosquito Control Association, uh, mosquitoes prefer biting drunk people. So kumbi ata mosquitoes zina kuanga na weekend. <laughs> that, that explains why mosquitoes ziko na tabia mingi kama za walevi. Kupigia watu kelele wakati wanalala, kuimba ya ujinga, kukojua kwa ukuta. <laughs> na wote unyamazishu wana kofi. Also, also, the DCI netted two high-end uh, uh, vehicles, a Range Rover and a Mercedes Benz using motorcycle number plates. What is that unscrupulous uh, car owners use this trick to evade tax. However, the main reason they were arrested did you acquaint the Range Rover bill a reflector alafu while Kwana Jaribu Queen Giatao. That said, let's hear what our reporter Kenyan Jui has prepared for us tonight. The machine you're looking at is a motorbike that has been promoted into a car by two young innovators from Kisumu, that is Mr. Anthony Wariaro and Moses Magaga. Duru's guesswork is the Kwaba. The design of this immediate former Duvi was inspired by a hammer. The machine comes with great features like acute air conditioning powered by a solar panel, Nigaria Kwanza Yamigu Tatu, Kuana four wheel drive, and it is also an armored vehicle Sababu, Hiomtia Gear, Ikona special security feature. In case of an emergency, Inaweza Kutumika Kamarugu, Yakumpiga Adui. Kuna TV hapo, 24 inch screen. For this, haters have described the car as a mobile television stud, but these heroes are not shaken. <laughs> Sound system is great, however, it's not fair kusema higari kona debe kwa sababu diyo imetekenezwa nayo. With top speeds of up to 17 kilometers per hour, it is perfect for going nowhere, but 
At least it's faster than the speed of most government development projects. The vehicle also has standard safety features with ample space to carry airbags in the boat. The whole car is also dangerous for intruders. That's why Kabla quick gear passengers are advised to be very careful. Sababu uki warwa na sehemu yote ya gari ile utalala Kenyatta. Congratulations are in order and the innovators are going places. Literally. Representing the guesswork fraternity on the Wicked Edition. Guess who? Kenya. Now, among the biggest stories from this week is the sad story of Julius Wambua, a father who has already served 10 years of a life sentence at the committee maximum prison after being falsely accused by his daughter of raping her. The hashtag Arrest Pascal was also top trending on Twitter after a story shared by a young lady who was allegedly raped by a stranger who had stayed at a place for more than two days surfaced online. Most of the feedback from that hashtag are people waiting to hear the accused side of the story. In fact, the tone was, justice has to be served, but people wanted to hear all sides of the story first. Now, one Facebook user also used the platform to share the pain he went through after being falsely accused of attempting to defile a girl at a coffee joint. Now, and uh, it happened that um, they beat him up first. And as one volunteer went for petrol so that the mob could roast him alive, as in they needed the petrol because human beings don't support combustion, the restaurant, <laughs> the, the restaurant workers pleaded with him with, with the crowd first, sorry, to check the CCTV footage to verify the little girl's claims. When that happened, it proved that, that the guy was innocent, but not after getting a thorough beating from the crowd. As in Kablawa confirm whether he was innocent or guilty, Kwanza wali mpiga kama matatu ya Kenya mpia. See, that's worse than ile vita ya kukata anangoma ya Red Sun. And the world is full of such examples. As actor Jesse Smollett was recently on the spot for faking an attack that caused wild outrage just to get a raise. Now the subject of our show tonight is about innocent people who are victims of a one-sided story and the role of our justice systems. Please share your thoughts with us on hashtag the Wicked Edition at Dr. Underscore King Audio on Twitter and Instagram, Dr. King Audio on Facebook, and our guest tonight is a seasoned lawyer and lawmaker. Honorable Milio, Milio Diambo joins us on the other end of this break to help us break this down even further. See you guys in a bit. Welcome back to the Wicked Edition. I'm Dr. Kingori. The subject on our show tonight is about how the justice system works in general. And our guest is a seasoned lawyer and, like I said, one of Kenya's favorite lawmakers, the MP for Suba North, Honorable Mili Odiambo. Yes, <laughs> you Karibu sana. Asante. Karibu sana. Yes. Uh, first of all, most people just know you as Milio Diambo, but when, I, when doing research, as in just to get a few more stories about you, I noticed that you have like five names without <laughs> yes. including the nicknames. Yes. Uh, the nickname which uh, people don't know is Akode. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it okay. gets worse. Huh? Uh, it's a, it so has the an nickname is Akode. To it. Yes. So there are people who call you Akode. Uh, since I was a kid, I've been called Akode. That's my home name. Ah. Yes. But uh, so I think it runs in the name. On Instagram, it's a different brand. <laughs> now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, now um, first, before we get to the subject of the show, yes. there was an incident. One of the latest incidents in Parliament mm -hmm. was a cut. A cat yes. showed up in parliament at first. Actually, you, you complained that you could hear the cat, but you couldn't see it. Yes. And then to make matters worse, uh, you, when you saw it, it was a black cat. Yes. And you requested <laughs> that uh, the, the house be cleansed. Yes. Uh, was the house cleansed? Am I in your suburb? We are some of the things we are seeing. The house was not cleansed. <laughs> that is why you are seeing all these things going on. All the drama. I think we should have brought in people to pray because how does a cat get into? A house where people are elected. Who elected the cat? <laughs> <laughs> and especially a black one. 
<laughs> so from that alone, yes. ungejua kuna shida hapo. Ah. Yes. And most people I think would like to know sana sana even before we get into it. Like the country seems divided now. Yes. And uh, no one seems to have the answers. We have uh, you are uh, as the NASA team was versus it was NASA versus the government. Mm -hmm. Now it seems to be Jubilee versus Jubilee. Yes. How does that make you feel now that as in, it's your turn, your tear gas in Asia. Do we see more tear gas coming from in? <laughs> I think the tear gas yes. is from people who are not used to um, people working together. Hata ukiangalia from the days, the biblical times, yes. when uh, Nehemiah was rebuilding the broken walls, yes. there were three people called uh, Sanballat, the Horonite, Tobiah, yes. the Hittite, and uh, somebody, the Arab. Uh, there were guys who were just. <laughs> When Nehemiah, uh, when Nehemiah uh, was building the wall, yes. when Nehemiah uh, was building, <laughs> 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 when uh, Nehemiah uh, was building the wall, yes. uh, they just said, uh, this one, even a cat will come and kick. I don't know if they meant that black cat. <laughs> will just come and kick. They cannot believe that people can work together. Ah. Yeah, but sometimes even the book of Ecclesiastes says there's a time for everything. There was a time for me to abuse. Yes. There was a time for me to abuse. And the time for me to hug. This is the time to, for handshake and to hug. So the ones who are all panicky, wajue kwa buke ya Ecclesiastes, it is the time. I don't know if it is the one that is called Kumbukumbu la Torati. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the time to hug and to handshake. Do you know the Bible to that much detail? Ama hizi ni zile tu zinaenda nishana na dhambi zenye unajua. Kama, kama, kama ni madhambi najua maybe then I cannot quote for you Exodus 20. You might say I'm adulterous. Do not commit sin, do not commit adultery. Yes. That is Exodus 20. So let me say hiyo ni mesahau. Oh. Let me look for the one which is love thy neighbor uh, <laughs> as <laughs> yourself. First John 4, 7 and 8. Huh? He says, yeah. uh, <laughs> Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God yes. and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. <laughs> <laughs> so we can love one another. So let me go, let me move away from those ones. So I also know the ones of love. Yes. Uh, the, the culture of judging before people get to know the truth is reflected even in our politics. Like when someone is accused of being a thief, uh, we can't wait for due process, you are a thief. That's it. Exactly. And so, so now that it has gotten to the ordinary monanchi, we get people like a guy mm -hmm. who spends 10 years in jail because of being falsely accused. You are the lawmakers. I'm told he cannot just be released like that, Badu. No. Why? Uh, first of all, let me actually say that I'm glad that you've said, you know, the public, yes. we have this uh, culture of mob justice. Yes. And I like the person who asked me what happened uh, during the security law amendment bill. Yes. Yes, yes, what yes. were you told? Merely unrest. Yes. So you have said merely unrest. When what actually happened is I was, un I was beaten by men and unrest by men. But what did you believe? That I unrest myself. When I was beaten, Minili, we were fighting, and you know, because Mini Kichwangum, they were stopping <laughs> us. They were stopping us from reaching the speaker who was somewhere like you. Yes. So when we were coming from there, you believe they were more than us, so they were all full here. Eh? Yes. So none of us could reach. So Mini Kasema, because I can't confront them, you know, if you went from front, while in Itwanga Kabisa, Moses Kuri and in Itwanga Hapa <laughs> Imagine that yes. is how the 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 yes, me, yes. Well, the gonga apa, but I say that a kama meni gonga, I must still reach the speaker. Yes. But you know me, I was endowed by God. Yes. So I said if I can't do it with my head, I turned on my back. So yes. I scumaded them with my back. <laughs> back and kafika. But when I reached there, yes. I couldn't really reach where the speaker was. Yes. I noticed there was something holding me. Okay. Quickly, I noticed what was holding me is that there were two men pulling up my dress. Yes. Then when I tried to pull it down, they were pulling it up. I tried to pull it down, they were pulling it up. Then when I tried to go forward, I couldn't. Kumbe one was pulling my panty, going with my panty. That is sad. Yes, yes. Mpaka they cut my panty, I have kept it. It is only fortunate it was a designer wear. Kama inge kwa designer, inge kwa 
<laughs> Imagine if I was not prepared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. New Ingekuaje. Ukweli. New ukweli. Yes. And, and uh, uh, how, how did it make you feel that people uh, jumped to conclusions that you undressed yourself, where the story is different? Uh, fortunately, you know, if yes. you actually Google, you find that what I was doing before I joined Parliament, yes. I did many things about rights, in uh, human rights and yes, women's yes. rights, including being the chairperson yes. of coalition on violence against women. So I understand something that we call the wheel of power and control. That when people undress me, they are taking power away from me. So I took the power away from them by uh, trashing what they did. So it will take, I don't know what it takes, for you to think you can pull down my esteem. And how because does, that's what they were trying to do. And, how, mili, mili. Ah, and, and how does the ordinary girl out there achieve that? Because <coughs> not everyone is as strong. Uh, they are not strong, but I train a lot of girls yes. on building their esteem. Yes. And I'm glad the one who said that because the boys, they feel the boys yes. have not reached there. But to Kianda, to imagine a, an honorable house. Yes. They can do that to me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What about the girls who are out there? I find it very hard to put uh, both genders in comparison because look at uh, the case in uh, one of the cases we are looking at today. A man was accused of uh, defilement. They didn't give him a chance. To, as in the, 10 years later is when people uh, get to bring this conversation on the table that mm, there could be a different truth after another side of the story comes up <coughs> because he is a man maybe. The other story about uh, a coffee house guy, a guy at a coffee house, uh, he was a repair, he was a repair, he was a technician. He was beaten and he was saved by the insistence by the restaurant workers that they check the CCTV footage. So if they didn't have CCTV footage, footage to prove that the guy was innocent, they would have burned him alive. So the problem is when it comes to the man too, some people would complain, Ama, some people would claim that no one listens. So it's risky both ways, don't you think? Uh, what I can tell you for sure yes. is that uh, the society yeah. and even the law was blind to the fact that boys can be abused. And here I'm talking about sexually abused. Yeah? Okay. That is why the Sexual Offenses Act was brought in to actually change some things. Okay. It was presumed that a boy, a boy child could not be raped. But okay. we have seen older women raping uh, yeah. younger boys. Yes. So that has changed. But in terms of the one you are saying that people are falsely accused, it yes. is actually a complex issue. And I'll tell you why it's a complex issue. Okay. That I, even before I came into parliament, I was the director of the Credo. Okay. And the Credo was um, an organization working, you know, we, it is an organization working with children, okay. protecting children who have been abused. Okay. And I can tell you on a day-to-day -day basis, when I sat in my office and we were big, we were all over the country. Yes. In Nairobi alone, you would receive up to 30 cases a day of girls who are sexually abused. But there were also cases which were very rare. Yes. Where people would falsely accuse. Yes. Uh, men yes. of raping, especially where people are separating. Okay. And it's unfortunate. And that is why you look at, if you look at the Sexual Offenses Act, Section 38, yes. it says that now if you falsely accuse somebody yes. of raping you, then the sentence they would have been given, you will be given the same for lying. So this girl yes. that was saying the father has, uh, she lied about the father, yes. I said that the first thing she needs even before the father is released, is she needs a lawyer to advise her. Because she's facing yes. life imprisonment for, telling a li for lying about her father, if that indeed is true. And I'll tell you why. Because I've, I've been in this sector for long. She was a minor. She was a minor then. It does not matter. Because even minors commit offenses. So even when she was a minor, and she, that's why I'm telling you she's not being given legal advice. Okay. Fortunately, that she was saying it at the you know TV on TV, on TV. yes and on TV that one way because for you to confess because she was actually confessing yes. the law provides a framework for confessions okay. which she didn't do but okay. if she were to go to a magistrate or go to an inspector you know police and confess she should be arrested and tried under section 38 of the sexual offenses act and she will be jailed for life so that the only explains. saving the only saving grace maybe now if she's charged Okay. is that maybe she can argue that she was a vulnerable witness okay. and she was not told.
okay. that she was manipulated and all that, but she can now use it in defense. But the people who could be charged is herself and her mother. But the reason why I'm telling you it's complicated yes. is that this girl needs once a lawyer, okay. but she also needs a psychologist or a counselor, okay. because you might also find that she's living with the guilt. She may have been sexually abused, okay. but is living with the guilt of having sent the father to prison or the stigma of people knowing that she was defiled by the father. So, so she can retract the story yes. and say, no, 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 I was not sexually abused. I was just lying. While she does not understand the legal implications. So somebody needs to talk to that girl. And maybe, Moshimo, you can, maybe a secret, before yes. we let you go, a secret. Yes. Uh, the money that is being, it um, was the money that the DCI is discovering yes. in places. A, the Mara 37 billion, Mara, the figure is lower, 8 billion. Yesterday, some money in a bank, uh, they got money like it's two billion. Others say it's uh, thirty-seven billion. H how comes we have so much money in the country? Because I'm told it may not be as fake as people claim. You know, in politics, especially in Parliament, you hear a lot of stories. Yes. And I've heard stories about people storing money. In okay. Parliament, I've heard people talking about it. And normally I take them like it's just rumor. You know, we spoil people, each, each other's I don't know as that, like, he... Kabisa, <laughs> Just <laughs> like outside here. Okay. Uh, you meet with them, <laughs> <laughs> You know, we also do it. Okay. It's human. Yes. So I normally listen to them and I was like, huh? You mean these things are actually true? Me, I thought yes. they were jokes. Yes. People talk about people. There are two stories I've heard very strongly. Yes. And I hope the DCI can investigate the second line. Okay. One is these people who get money through corrupt deals and keep them, mainly they are politicians. Yes. Two, there are some who are not politicians but connected to politicians yes. who trade in gold that are also kept in these safes. They call people from out of the country, okay. they cheat them, they are going to sell them, and it is the same gold that has been sold to a thousand investors. The they investors come and show land. you, you see it, they come and remove it from that uh, safe. Yes. They show you. Yes. Once you've proven it's gold and you deposit your money, they say that it's on the way. When I Rhodesia, the money never comes, the gold never reaches. They wait for the next victim. So the gold story yes. and this money, I have had it countless times in parliament. Actually, that, that could mean that the money is not fake first. Probably, most likely. Okay. That answers very many questions. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, I'm not the DCI, <laughs> but I'm just saying probably. <coughs> okay. Ask every leader. Like you are working, uh, you are a friend of the government. Yes. Uh, there is Jubilee. Yes. Jubilee is now splitting, uh, appears to be splitting, because uh, NASA people are working with Jubilee. What's the harm in everyone working together if it's for the good of the ordinary Kenyan? There is nothing. That's why I was started with the Sanballat and Tobias story. Yes. And I want to encourage my brother Ruto, yes. who when I was in university was also with me in the Christian Union. You so are I with want. Yes, we were with him in the Christian Union. <laughs> so I want to encourage him. I want to encourage him to re look at the book of Nehemiah, especially the book of Nehemiah 4, and help us rebuild the wall. Let him learn to be happy. Let him re look at the book, re -book, the book of Nehemiah. Yes. And uh, work together. There's a time for everything and time and a season for everything. You are at uh, UON with the deputy president. Yes. In CU together. Yes. How many of you were CU and UON are in government now? Sikumbuki. <laughs> wawili. No. Yeah. If you say Sisi wawili, you'd think there was something wrong with us. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, ah yeah, so that's a very, very, very interesting point. Wapi makofi ya moshimiwa? Thank you for coming to our show. We hope to invite you over and over again. Ameweza ama wajaweza? Ameweza! Thank you. That's it for the weekend edition. See you next week. My name is Dr. Kimoni.